Hi everybody, welcome back to my series on Steven Soderbergh. Uh, sorry I missed last week. Um, with Thanksgiving and everything like that, I was kind of busy so I didn't have time to post or indeed even make the video. Um, but I wanted to uh, resume uh, with a couple of movies uh, that Soderbergh directed uh, with George Clooney in the lead. Uh, as we know by now, George Clooney and Soderbergh have a very close friendship uh, and he enjoys working with him and uh, does you know films with him that he would normally do with other people, at least not at that point. He wanted to do more risky material, I think, with Seriana, uh, and he won Best Supporting Actor uh, for that. Coincidentally, Seriana is directed by Stephen Gagan, which, uh, who, who, who is the guy who wrote the screenplay for Traffic, which Soderbergh directed, but George Clooney was not in. Did you follow that? Um, anyway, Solaris um, is based on a novel by Stanislav Lem, uh, and it's about uh, a... Uh, a psychiatrist. The film, anyway, is about a psychiatrist who travels to a space station that's orbiting this planet of Solaris in the future. Um, and he has a uh, uh, interaction with a individual, a creature of some kind, that greatly resembles his deceased wife. Uh, his wife actually committed suicide some years ago. Um, and as it turns out, everyone on the station is actually experiencing the same kind of thing. Each one has a person from their past come and visit them, just appear out of nowhere on the station. Apparently this is the effect that uh, Solaris, the planet, has on the people who come close to it. Um, everyone's super bummed about this for the most part. <laughs> and um, the, the funny thing about this film is though it's uh, kind of bleak uh, and uh, certainly downbeat, um, one of the producers on the film is James Cameron. Um, and James Cameron, of course, <laughs> tends to make movies that he thinks will do extremely well at the box office. This is one of his uh, mottos, is that he is uh, uh, going to swing for the fences, trying to hit a home run every single time out of the gate, uh, starting with Terminator 2 and going through True Lies uh, and Titanic uh, and Avatar. You know, he is trying to make the biggest, most, you know, uh, most audience-friendly film that he possibly can, whilst not insulting their intelligence. He's not always successful in that part as far as I'm concerned, but um, he's a very driven guy and he's interested in, in not only making film uh, that's entertaining and pushing the technology, but also making sure that the people that are funding the movies get their money worth. Well, that didn't happen on Solaris. It only made about 30 million bucks and it cost at least 50 million to make uh, because it is a science fiction film with effects, but it doesn't have any fights or chases or anything like that. No, no big spaceships rocketing around and blasting things up. Um, it's a, you know, a psychodrama. It's a psychodrama set in space uh, in the future. Um, so that may, more, may be one of the reasons why it didn't do so well. Um, Cameron's, um, I just read a review actually, uh, uh, an interview that he did on Dark Horizons around the time the film was coming out. And he was talking about having sort of a hands-off approach uh, not being around the set to check up on everybody. He knew Soderbergh knew what he was doing. He knew he and Clooney had a good relationship and they would you know, make the best film they possibly could. He also talked a little about the difference between his technique and Soderbergh's technique. Um, apparently Soderbergh likes to um, uh, uh, include everything in the first cut and then sort of chip away at what doesn't work, whereas Cameron doesn't like doing that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Solaris is one of a very interesting film. It's one of my favorite movies from that year. I liked it a lot more than The Good German, although I think The Good German is a decent movie. It isn't, like, one of my favorites. I rescreened it recently, um, and I was surprised by how much of the movie that I'd forgotten, that I just, just, you know, just completely forgot about. It didn't make a huge impression on me, um, aside from the fact that it's done in a style which is kind of similar to what Todd Haynes did for... Uh, his film Far From Heaven with Julianne Moore, in which he tried to replicate an older style of filmmaking. That's what Soderbergh does here as well. Um, I'm not sure if the film is available in a widescreen version because the disc that I uh, got was actually a full screen disc. Um, but I think if you have a flat screen monitor that you can adjust the picture size on, uh, you can actually magnify the image without distorting it and you won't have anything cut off the top and the bottom because it's framed in a very specific way. But it's in black and white, uh, it's, done, it's, it's shot in the aspect ratio of those old time uh, World War II films. Um, it's set in Germany um, and uh, Clooney plays a, a, a journalist, I think, uh, who is uh, dressed in military uniform and is uh, basically wandering around looking for this woman that he had a relationship with years ago. He has to deal with the Tobey Maguire character uh, who plays uh, an army driver uh, who's uh, a bit of a, a sleazeball, you know. <laughs> He's got his hands in all kinds of pockets trying to make extra cash so he can get his girlfriend, who happens to be the same woman uh, that Clooney had this relationship with. She's played by Kate Blanchett. Um, 
The story gets really complicated after a while. It was kind of difficult for me to follow. Normally, I don't have a problem with complicated storylines, but uh, yeah, he's got to deal with a whole bunch of characters uh, who want all kinds of different stuff, and he's just trying to survive. He's trying not to get killed. He's trying not to get involved in any shady business. Um, what his original intention was when he first arrived there, I'm not really sure. I think it had something to do with writing something, um, but uh, all in all, the story left me kind of confused. So, although I think it's a uh, a decent movie. I think it would take me a couple more viewings to really puzzle through the storyline and have it really clear in my head. So I can't wholeheartedly recommend that one. Uh, but Solaris I would, if that's the kind of thing you're in the mood for. Again, it's a very downbeat kind of uh, gloomy movie. Um, but to all in all, you know, there are two movies that basically had big studio resources behind them, but they were very experimental. That's one thing I like about Soderbergh, is that he's willing to try a lot of different stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, his, his whole attitude is, let's do something different uh, than the usual thing, you know, and different from what I've done before already. He doesn't, like, settle into one particular style of filmmaking, uh, which is very apparent um, when you look at his career as a whole. Um, so Solaris is the one that I'd recommend of the two. The Good German, you know, is worth a look, but, you know, again, I wouldn't say, yes, definitely go and see it. It's a must-see. I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, the next two films I'm going to be doing, uh, hopefully that video will be up in a week's time. Full Frontal, uh, which stars Julia Roberts and Blair Underwood and David Duchovny, and uh, Bubble, which is uh, a very low-budget film uh, that's have, that has no recognizable actors in it at all, at least as far as I'm concerned. I've only seen each of these movies once, so I'm going to rescreen them before next week, before I do my video. I hope you guys tune in for that. And if you've seen either Solaris or The Good German, want to uh, talk a little bit about what you thought of it, please leave me a comment or make a video and attach to mine. I'll include you in the uh, playlist of Soderbergh um, videos that I'm building right now. Thanks very much for watching, guys. See you again real soon. Bye.